It is also possible to specify the convexity of a function using its first or second order derivatives. So let us look at the first order condition. which says that f of y is greater than equal to f of x plus gradient f of x inner product with y minus x. So this is the first order condition. It is called because we are now using the gradient of f at x. Note that the gradient of f is basically if you have x as a vector in Rn, then the ith entry of the gradient is the partial derivative of f with respect to xi. So let's try to get some intuition as to what the first order condition means. So for that purpose, let us draw a function. Let's consider a point which is x then this value is f of x and then let us draw the tangent of the function at this point. So the first order condition specifies that the function is always above the tangent at any point. This is exactly what is expressed in the inequality above. In particular, what it is saying is that consider a point y then the function value at that point is given by f of y. What is this value? You can observe that the, this difference is y minus x and therefore this value is, if you remember basic geometry, tan theta is given by this height divided by y minus x. Therefore the red height is given by the inner product of gradient f of x comma y minus x. Likewise, the green height is given by f of y minus f of x. So the first order condition is simply saying that this quantity f of y minus f of x is greater than equal to inner product of gradient f of x comma y minus x. So in other words, the green arrow or the green length is greater than or equal to the red one. An interesting point to note about the first order condition and in fact also any conditions that rely on the derivative is that the derivative is a very local thing. It depends only on the function value and the, how the slope of the function changes at a given point x. Yet convexity, which is a global property of the function, is being specified in terms of this local property, which is the derivative. What I mean to say is that this first order condition holds for all y in the domain of f. So it can be applied to any x and it holds for all y in the domain of f. In fact, we can derive global properties of the function based on the first order property. For instance, let us consider a scenario. So suppose there exists a point x0 such that gradient f of x0 is equal to 0. Then it follows from the first order condition that f of y is greater than equal to f of x0 plus gradient f of x0 comma y minus x0 and because the gradient is 0 this term becomes 0 so therefore we have that f of y is greater than equal to f of x0 for all y in the domain of f. So what does this imply? This implies that x0 is the argmin of f of x. Right? So x0 is the minimizer of f of x and f of x0 is the smallest value that f takes. So in other words, this is an optimality condition for convex function. So for convex function, the point which takes the minimum value 
must satisfy this inequality that gradient f of x0 is equal to 0. Again gradient is a local condition so you only need to check the gradient at x0 and then you can say about the entire function that the entire function will be above this uh, gradient this point f of x0. So essentially what is happening in this case is that the tangent is a horizontal line and the entire function lies above the tangent which is this horizontal line. So this was the first order condition. There is also the second order condition. Obviously the first order condition can only be applied when the function is differentiable. Likewise, the second order condition can only be applied when the function is twice differentiable, which means the second derivative of the function must exist at all points. So the Hessian of the function is denoted by this sign and uh, basically the i jth entry of the Hessian, which is a matrix, is given by del 2f del xi del xj. So it is essentially the derivative, the second derivative of f. So partial derivative with respect to xi, partial derivative with respect to xg. And this is basically should hold for ij equal to 1 to n. So this is the Hessian. In case you have not seen the Hessian before, it is really straightforward to calculate. So for instance, uh, Hessian of so let's say that f of x is equal to a transpose x plus b and x is a vector then if x is a vector in Rn then its Hessian will belong to Rn cross n. It will be a matrix and in this case its Hessian is given by so just differentiate twice f with respect to xi xj and it is easy to see that the ijth entry in this case is 0. Right, so that is the Hessian. So the 0 matrix is the Hessian of A transpose x plus b. Now the second order condition for convexity is that the Hessian, which is a matrix in n cross n, should be positive semi-definite. Should be positive semi-definite matrix. So this is the second order condition. As we just now saw, for this case A transpose X plus B, the Hessian is 0. And 0 is clearly greater than or equal to 0. It's positive semi-definite because it is all 0. So therefore, this A transpose X plus B is convex. Where we already know that, but it is easy to see here that it is convex. So second order condition is actually in many cases, it is really simple to verify. Sometimes it is a little bit complicated, but generally it is simple to verify and it's usually the easiest way to verify whether a function is convex or not, provided that it is differentiable. If it is not differentiable, then you cannot apply the second order condition. Let's take a slightly more complicated example. Let's say that f of x is equal to half x transpose px plus q transpose x plus r. So this is the general quadratic form. So what can we say about its convexity? Let us expand this quadratic form and see how it can be written. So this can be written as half of summation i not equal to j xi xj pij plus q transpose x plus r right pay particular attention to the first term where xi xj occurs twice once for i comma j and then again for j comma i so what is the ijth term of the hessian which is given by partial of f with respect to xi and xj which would basically be pij divided by 2 plus pji divided by 2 right because xi and xj occurs twice in this summation 
the de the second derivative of the last two terms is clearly zero as we saw earlier so this becomes equal to pij plus pji divided by 2 so let's assume that now let us assume that p is symmetric or pij is equal to pji then it can be clearly seen that the hessian of f is equal to p hence what is required for f to be convex it is obvious that f is convex if and only if p is positive semi definite so the quadratic form given here is convex whenever p is symmetric positive semi definite for non symmetric matrices you can apply the similar definition just consider p plus p transpose divided by 2 instead of p